This is Star Talk. Here we go. Dietrich, Diet, Dietrich. Oh, Jesus, what Dietrich. Is Dietrich. Thank you. Dietrich Inswig wants to know this. <clears throat> oh, Kaya. Dietrich Inswig <laughs> Kaya. That's the name, right? Okay. Di Kaya. Di Kaya says, "Do it yourself, Kaya." D there you go. No, Profit. that's Dy. I'm that sorry. D -Y. Carry on. There you go. Hello, Mister Nye. Do you foresee that GMOs will be the sole food source at the grocery stores anytime soon? Meaning, will food be so difficult to come by as the population grows ex exponentially that all food will have to be modified in some way so that it can be grown and harvested in widespread locations? Well, in other words, are we headed towards soil and green, but it's not people? Uh, the answer is we're already there. Ooh. Not to get too weird on you, but everything that you eat... With very few exceptions. I mean, you might wander through the occasional forest and eat a nut. Or uh, I remember uh, there were some wild blackberries that mm -hmm. I encountered often as a kid. Uh, you'll eat those, but generally everything you eat is from a farm where people over the last 10,000 years have hybridized, modified, selected artificially or induced choosing of uh, the offspring so that we got these the foods that we all enjoy today. So the answer is we're already there. Not to be dismissive, just that taking genes from one organism and putting them in another for farming mm -hmm. is what we're doing now, which happens in nature from time to time. These viruses work their way into the genes of the, the classic is the sweet potatoes. Uh, this is happening naturally, so we're just doing it carefully and diligently and fast. And that's how we're able to feed so many people. All right. Now, here's an addendum to that question. I'm Please. Going to, I'm going to speak on behalf of Chuck Dietrich. Nicco. Yes. So is, is there a possibility or a danger of centralizing our food source in such a concentrated fashion where we harm ourselves by giving too much power to the people that feed the world? I, I think psychologically... There's a real fear amongst people of that being the case. So is it, I think I know what you mean. Is it a corporation that you're afraid of? You're Abs, not, that's my point, man. Okay, but you're not exactly afraid of a farmer. No, I'm not afraid of a farmer because if I don't like my little upstate farmer guy, I'm like, all right, well, screw you, upstate farmer guy. I'm going to go to downstate farmer guy. Okay, so but if the upstate farmer guy and the downstate farmer guy are all one guy, well, maybe I'm in a little bit of trouble now. All right, I get you. So bear in mind, farmers make choices. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what I sound like farmers make choices. They can buy seeds from this guy or that guy. All right. And like everything else, do you remember uh, gateway computers? Yes, I do. Okay. Like yes. everything else, uh, things have gotten consolidated because of international commerce has made it more efficient. And I understand our fear of corporations, but nevertheless, that is manageable through, dare I say it, regulation, mm -hmm. you know, where you would make it so that the marketplace is generally fair. So uh, this is, seems like a very solvable problem, but I, I am not worried about the man uh, taking over the world because farmers make choices and producing seeds with certain characteristics uh, is very competitive business. And so it'll, and the seed being one example, this will remain, this will be the way it is. You know, Roundup is a famous brand. Yes, it is. I have but, some in my basement. I hate to say no, it, but fine. I do. But there are <laughs> dozens of country, companies, several of them are, are in Asia mm -hmm. that manufacture a very similar glyphosate salt that is well suited as an herbicide. Gotcha. So it's a competitive business. All right. Just that the glyphosate thing was so successful that everybody embraced it, home gardener and farm, industrial farmer alike. This is Star Talk.